Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Shatterpoint painting series. In this video I'll be painting Lord Maul from Atomic Mass Games Star Wars Shatterpoint. Let's jump straight in. As usual, you can see that I've primed the figure in black, followed with some grey and white zenithal highlights applied from above, as detailed back in episode 1. I also chose to leave the left arm off for now, in case it gets in the way whilst painting places like the face. As I often like to do, I'm starting by painting the whites of the eyes with an off-white, in this case scale colours Nakar. I'm then using a mix of Tenera yellow and Sol yellow to paint the iris. And I'm now using pure black for the pupils, as well as the area immediately surrounding the eye. Before painting the red skin, I'm first boosting the levels with an undercoat of pure white for all of the areas that I want to appear brightest. I'm then painting over this using mainly Antares Red, but we'll mix this freely with some Blood Red for the slightly more shadowed areas, such as the lower part of the body. The white undercoat ensures that we achieve a super bright, vibrant tone. You can see I'm painting the entire front of the face with this, and we'll be adding the black patterns in a while. Here I'm just going a little darker by mixing in the blood red. I'm now painting the black parts of the skin using black mixed with some Caspian blue. Although the tattoos are nicely marked on the sculpt, this will still be quite a test of our brush control. We can also use this for the black parts of the outfit. For the brown tone of the arms and legs, I'm using a mix of brown leather and petroleum grey. I've decided to use the same off-black tone used a moment ago for the waist and the wrist armour. I've now decided to paint the base as detailed in the previous episodes. I'm doing this now as there's a good chance that I'm going to hit the legs in the process. Next I'm painting the lower half of the legs using a mix of earth green and black. This gives us a nice oily metal base tone, and it can be applied thinly enough to allow for some natural shading to occur. 
Some of the orangey earth tones will still show through here on the feet, but we'll be building up plenty of highlights on top in a moment. Next I've chosen to use an equal mix of Black Templar and Griff Charger Grey for the handle of the lightsaber. And finally I'm painting the horns using a mix of Arocco and brown leather. We're now ready to add the highlights. Whilst the paint is still fresh on the palette, I'm going to first highlight the horns up to pure Iroko from the Iroko and brown leather base tone. I'm then adding some white sands and some Tanara yellow to brighten the tips. Next I'm going to highlight the black skin markings by adding a small amount of white sands to the black and Caspian blue base tone. To highlight the black parts of the outfit, I'm adding Thar Brown to the base tone. I'd quite like a bit of a textured look here. These are my brightest highlights. I'm also using Thar Brown to lighten the base tone for the brown areas. Moving on to the areas of metal, I'm going to be adding increasing amounts of white to the earth green and black base tone, along with a little Prussian blue for the lighter highlights to vary the hue. I'm first just establishing my mid-tones. I'm 
I'm also painting the metallic details on the waist and the wrists. I'm now adding additional white along with a little of the Prussian blue. I'm going to focus on the left leg to begin with. It's worth trying not to rush too quickly to the brightest highlights when working in a non-metallic metal style like this, and enjoy the movement through the mid-tones. I'd quite like a fairly weathered and beaten appearance, so I'm not worried about producing immaculately neat transitions here. I'm also freely adding a few small chips and scratches. And here I've chosen to use some thinned orange leather to create a bit of orange cast or weathering. You can see I like to brush some of this up into the shadows. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking, so I'm doing the same for the right leg. And I'm now highlighting the metallic details on the belt and wrists. There's not much room to manoeuvre on these little segments, but we can still create a little bit of variation. Naturally, I'm saving the brightest highlights for the upper edges and corners. Let's now add some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the little lights on the waist by first providing an undercoat of pure white.
Then for the orange lights, I'm brushing over some fluorescent red by Vallejo. And for the little blue lights, I'm using Scale Colors Adriatic Blue. This is very optional, but here I'm mixing some golden skin into Antares Red and providing a few small highlights to the face. I'm now gluing the left arm into place and I'm painting the blades of the lightsaber using increasing amounts of Antares Red mixed into some white to create my gradients, just as I did for Asajj Ventress back in episode 3. Here I've chosen to create a simple frontal strip of white highlight fading into red at the back. I also chose to mix a touch of Sol Yellow into the white for the frontal highlight. And I'm just going back and forth a little until I'm happy with how things look. I went all the way up to pure Antares Red here at the back. I'm now adding a few final refinements, including touching up the base and adding some dark lining. I also decided to brush some thinned fuchsia into the corner of the eyes, which just seemed a little too white. And this completes Lord Maul. Thank you for joining me, I hope you have enjoyed the episode. As usual, you can find full product lists in the video description, along with links to all of the places I can be found online, including the various social media and music platforms. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Shatterpoint. Happy painting! <laughs>